uh, channel this is my youtube page as you can see youtube.com at amokea self and this is what i did earlier so i have this i cloned it and i have it in about four or five section i have the header here i have the side navigation i have the banner i have this channel introduction here and i have all of this navigation i have these buttons just exactly as my youtube channel is i cloned it here so i want to show you how you can do this using just html and css so let's just dive right into this using our um, visual studio code editor so i'm going to name this youtube clone and then i link my css file which i earlier created youtube.css I'm also going to be using some external icons from awesome fonts so I'm going to copy this in my header so that it can reflect whenever I get to use the icons once this is done we can now get to work so the process is write the HTML then style it corresponding using CSS right so if you have if you see what I have here I have this head and I have this side navigation so we're going to start with the header and this header has three sections we have the left we have the middle section and we have the right section so styling this header I'm just going to have to come here and I call a header and I close this and I style I call it div I give this a class of left section let me call this left section in the meantime I'm going to delete it and then I have the middle section let me also call this middle section just for the time being and I'll give this a class of middle session finally I have the right session and I would also give a class So we can open this up with live server and we can see what we have. We have the left middle and we have the right session. Once this is done, I'm going to go to my CSS. I want to style this header, right? So since it's a class, remember to always use a dot before a class. So I have a header and I'm going to give this header a height, a fixed height of 80 pixels then I'm going to give this a display of flex now with flex the default up, um, arrangement in flex is always a row so I do not necessarily need to give it a flex direction but if I choose to I can decide to still give this a flex direction Okay, I haven't given this a class yet. So I have this. I'm just going to ignore the flex direction. I want it to have justify content center. Uh, I want it space between actually would be better because we have the left here, we have the middle and we have the right section. So I want it space between. 
and then i want to be able to give this a position of fixed because it sticks to the top of the browser whenever i scroll and i can give the coordinates top zero I can give it left zero right zero so it stretches then i'm going to give this a z index of 100 so it comes right above every other thing i put on my page once this is done i'm going to give it a temporary background color so we can be able to see it possibly i give this just a temporary background color so you can see that we have the left session we have the mid session and we have the right session so we can start styling and putting the uh, content for the left session for the middle session and for the right session once this is done i will go to the left session in my html now what do i have in my html left session i have this the hamburger menu and then i also have this youtube uh, logo that has a superscript of ng so i'm going to call up this in my left session i'm going to delete this and I would give this image it's in a folder called icons so I call up that, I that icons and I also give this a class I'll call this class menu I would also call up my YouTube give this a class as well I'll give this logo once this is done we can go to styling our left section but before then I would come back to put the superscript so let's just dive right into styling the left section so the left section is out and we can't see the menu and we can't see the logo here and that's because it is big so what i'm going to do is style those two i'm going to call up the menu and i'll give it a height of 25 pixel i would so i have this in the menu Okay, so the YouTube logo also just automatically became small and I'm also actually going to give the YouTube logo its own height and I'll call up this YouTube logo which is logo I'll give it a height let me say 25 pixels as well so it's it's a lot bigger now to start the left section let's see what we have here on our practice here what i've done you can see that there's a space here in between these two and it's displayed as a flex right because the default direction for a flex is a row and it's important for me to actually put that flex so that i can be able to align the item center or justify the content however i want so i'm going to come here and i'll call up this left section So this is where position comes in 
I'm going to give my left section a position of relative so that I can be able to give this ng a position of absolute and place it on a parent container that already has a position of relative. Coming here, I give this position relative. And let's say I want to have my left section on a confined width. Right, so I want to give this my left section a confined width of 180 pixels so that it doesn't resize with the screen. So, looking at what I have here, this will always resize the middle section will resize, but if you observe the left section and the right section remains the same. That's why I'm giving my left section a confined width of 180 pixels. I haven't done this. I'm then going to go to work on the superscript of NG that I have on my on my YouTube logo. So I'm going to come to my HTML and just under this image here, I'm going to give it another div here. I'm going to put another div, and this is where my NG would be. I'm going to give this div a class. I will call this class. Let me say logo superscript will be better. So once this is done, I'm going to go and give it a position of absolute and give it some coordinate. So it's going to be on my YouTube uh, logo. So coming to my HTML here, you see what we have it's just beside it so back to my CSS So for this logo superscript, I'm going to give it a position relative. I'm going to give the position of absolute rather, and I can set coordinates. I want it a top of 12 pixel, and I want it a right of zero. So looking at what we have here, this. Possibly check if there's a it is an error in my uh, in my class because so usually I always get that every time. So I'm just going to copy this and I paste it in my CSS. Okay. I see that logo superscript that's the class and I've given this a position okay there's so much of space over there so I'm sure with this is going to work so since I already have this and it's working what I'm going to do is it's kind of too far too far I don't know why it's too far let me change the height of my YouTube logo and see okay I probably just increase the height to 30 I want it to be a little bit bigger so I have this and this is working so once I have done this I'm going to go back to what I have here if you can observe there is a little bit of space on the left side of this menu so I'm going to give this a margin left of um, let me see 20 pixel and let's see what we have so giving this imagine okay so this has worked and i have this looking good now in between my left session in between the um the youtube logo and the and the youtube here there is also some space in between so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give that space i could give um my my menu here imagine right which can also can also work i think that's really just the best 
an easy thing for me to do is to give it a margin right i'm just also going to give it a margin right of 20 pixels <coughs> excuse me so giving this a margin right now it has worked except that my um my ng has to change this coordinate is not going to be applicable for it because it's now on i need it to be a little bit um to the right so let me just try giving this a negative okay it's still literally I'm going to change the size here and i'll have this at 24 pixels so it's back to where i need it to be and i might not even need to use a negative um pixel here yeah? i can just leave this at zero still and i'm still having something similar to what i have here so having done this i want to also style this my logo subscript i want to make it a little bit bold okay possibly i might just leave it the way it is i want to give it a font size maybe it can be bigger let me try giving it okay font family might not be bad as well so let's use Arial and let me use a font size of 14 pixel. Let me see what I have. Okay, so this looks good. My uh, left session is coming out well. So back to the project, you can see we have a middle session. So we need to put in some things in our middle session and we need to be able to style our middle session just the way we've done for the left session. So I come back to my HTML here. And I want to style my middle session. I'm going to come here and delete what I have here as a middle session. I want to put this particular search. I want to put this search uh, icon. And I want to also put this voice voice search icon. As well as put this tooltip. As you can see, whenever I over around this search, I have this tooltip under. Whenever I over around this voice, I also have this tooltip under. So I'm going to come to the middle session and I work my way down to the to the last. I'm going to call up input because we're looking at a search a search bar. So calling up input, I'm going to call up the type. It's a text. And I'm going to give it a placeholder of search so i'm also going to give this a class because it's important for me to be able to target it however i want and i'll call this a search box Once I'm done with the input, I'm also going to put the button which would contain the search icon and also contain the two tip directly under the search icon. So I'm going to call up a button here. I'm going to give this button a class and I'll call this button search. Inside this button search, I'm going to give it, I'm going to call up the image because that's where I'm going to put this particular icon as well as a tooltip, right? So I'm just going to use the image, this SRC, we have it in an icons here, and it's called search SVG. Then. I'm going to have to bring another div and I give that div a position of absolute because that's where my two tip is. Right? I hope I'm making sense. So in this div here, I'm going to put search and I'm going to give it a class. I'll call this two tip.
okay so it's large and my search is inside so for now i'm just going to still remove this div here and work my way down to the top just like i've said so let me go to the button that i've given this class of um, uh, button search and let me begin to style this the way i want so this um this icon here that i called i also want to give it its own class so that i can be able to style it accordingly so i'm going to give this a class and i'll call this class search icon okay so with this i think i'm ready to go so i have this div in my middle session i have the input and i have the button that houses the search image which would also house the two tip so let me go to my css and work my way down with this for the middle session i'm just going to put it directly under this place and i'll call this middle session now in the middle session i'm also going to give it a margin to the right which is going to space it from the right okay maybe this might not be necessary for now because this is going to be way bigger than it's going to be so i'm going to change this and i want it to have a display of flex because i want it to be bigger for everything i put inside i want it to have a display of flex and i want it to have a flex of one and then i want it to have a max width so that it won't resize more than when it gets to the 600 pixels once this is done i'm going to also give my uh, middle section a a line item to be centered so they all can be in the center so let me see what i have here now it's looking good but if you observe this search icon is not showing and that's because it is bigger than it's actually way bigger than it is so i'm going to go to my html and i'll call up this class that has my search uh, icon here which i called the the class here i call this class the search box right i'm going to style this image which is the search icon i'm going to give it an image of 25 pixel and um, let me do that in my css so I'm just going to come here. I'm also going to give this a height of 25, just like I give to the uh, hamburger menu. Okay, now it's quite visible. Once this is done, I'm going back to my HTML here. I want to style this search box. This search box class is what uh, houses this my input of search here that has this placeholder. So I want to style this to be similar to what I have here and what I have here. I'm going to come to my HTML, my CSS, and I'm going to go come here. I'll call up the search box. Now in my search box, I'm going to give this a flex of one, just the way I gave the middle session a flex of one. I'm also going to replicate this here. Then I want to give this a height. Okay, it's looking good. Now that this is done, I want you to have a padding on the inside to the left. I'll give you the padding left of 10 pixel. Okay. 
and then I want to have a font size so when I type in it it's going to be bigger so 16 pixels let me see this all right so I haven't done this I'm going to add a border to it now the border I'm going to add is going to curve like this just only on the left side not full border so I'm going to call up a border top left so this is the top and this is the left and I'll call up a border top no a border bottom left and I'll call up a border top left radius so calling up a border bottom left I'll give this a value of 20 pixel and I'll also call up a border bottom left radius okay I have left here so I'll change this to right and I have this 20 pixel Okay, it's not reflecting yet let me check my class as usual I always make that mistake whenever I'm styling so this is not called search box it is I'm currently even styling the wrong thing so literally this is supposed to be a class of search box but I targeted search icon instead so I'm I made that mistake here I'm going to correct this and I'm going to see what we have we have a bottom left radius 20 okay it's not supposed to be bottom right it's supposed to also be a bottom um it's supposed to be a bottom top and this is supposed to be top so i think i have this correct oh my goodness i'm making so many mistakes so this is a bottom a border bottom left radius the bottom left so this here should be border top left radius this should be border top left radius so border top left radius instead so yes finally i have this and i have my padding left on the inside of 10 i've given it a height of 25 pixel and um I'm going to change this height because it still looks really small to me and I'm going to change this height to be uh, just going to first of all remove this because I'm targeting the search box instead so let me work my way down so I'm going to put that flex here of one yes so i have this inside this place and i'm going to give it a height of 35 instead of 25 okay now this looks good and um i'm going to give it a border and i'm going to make it solid and i would also give it a color Once this is done, I want it to have a shadow on the inside. So I'm going to call up a box shadow and I'll put inset so that the shadow can be on the inside. I want it one pixel, two pixel, three pixel, and I want to have a color.
now so for shadow we have this um, representing the vertical then I have the two pixel representing the horizontal and I have the three pixel here representing our uh, the blow and I have all of this RGB which is 0 0.5 here representing the opacity so it's a little bit of shadow I don't know if it's visible but there's a little bit of shadow inside this and um, my RGB color is not coming up so I need to I think this 0 0.5 is too much it's 0 0.05 should be better and um, I always make the mistake of adding a space in my RGB whenever I'm calling up colors I don't need to put a space so I have this shadow here let me increase the opacity maybe it's going to make it be visible so 0 0.5 now you can see that the shadow is thicker so I'm going to reduce this to 0 0.05 once this is done I'm going to leave this and I'll add a width here of zero. So I have my box shadow and this is done. I have my uh, search box and this is done. Now going back to the design, what I've done here, you can see I have this search icon here. And in my HTML, I already gave this search, uh, this search image, I gave it a class of search icon. So I can now style the search icon appropriately, right? So I come to my CSS and I call up the search icon. Now in this search icon, I'm also going to give it a height of 25 so it can be visible. Okay, then I'm also going to add a margin to the top of um, 4 pixel, right, so I've added a margin to the top to add some space on the outside in the top of my, of my search here, and I have it to be this. Now, um, since this is since this is what I have here and it's kind of similar yet but I still need to style I need to still style it so I'm going to come back to what I have in this and I need it to have this border radius and I need to have uh, I need it to be a little bit light on the inside which is currently not in this place so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the uh, search on the button search if you see I gave this a class which is the button search right so this button search houses of course the image that contains this search icon so coming to my button search right I don't know if I'm making any sense this button search here is this is this outward stuff that this uh, icon is inside and I want to style it because I already captured the search icon in my CSS here and I gave the search icon a confined height so I want to style that button search right and I want to be able to give it a confined height a confined width I want to give it a background color I want to give it a border I want to give it you know a border radius so that it can be similar to what I have here. Now I'm going to call up the button search real quick and I'll give this a height over 38 pixel. Okay, let me be sure I'm um, okay okay so once i'm done i'm also going to add the width of 60 pixel okay this is better and i'm going to have the background color i'm 
I'm going to use the RGBA. Now, no space, then I won't make that mistake again. So, I have 250, 250, 250. Okay, now it has a border. I want to remove that border. So, I'm going to have to do something about the border and I'm going to have to style the border. So, what I'm going to do here is to give it a border. I want it maybe one pixel because that is too thick. And I want it to be solid. And I want the RGB. I'm going to use this 192, 192 that I currently have. So I have something similar. I'm going back to my project. I have this similar. So what I'm going to do is to give, to make this come closer so I won't see this line in the middle here. I'm going to add a margin. So adding a margin. Left. So it can come closer on the left and I'm going to use a negative margin of one pixel. Okay, so this is better. And then I can add all of my border to this. I'm just going to add a border. Um, I'm going to add a border top right radius and I'm going to give this 20 pixel as well and I'm going to call up a border bottom right radius of 20 pixel okay so this is good now I haven't done this I'm also going to add a margin on the right so that there can be space between this and the voice icon I want to add. So margin right of 8 pixel. Okay, that's not going to be visible, but it's there. So I also want to style this search here, yeah, that placeholder. So in order for me to style the placeholder, I'm going to call up a pseudo class. I'm going to put this directly here because I'm working on the search. So I'm just going to call up the pseudo class, which is the search box. I'm even supposed to put it just directly under under this um, search icon. So I'm going to call up this search box. Then I'm going to add a placeholder. For placeholder, it has to be double colon. So... For the placeholder, I want to give it the a color, and I also want to give it a font size. I'm going to give it the font size of let me say 15 pixels. Let me see how that's going to look. So 15 pixel, okay, it's better. And I can also give this a color to make it a little faint. I'm also going to color up the RGB. So with this RGB, I'm going to give it um, RGBA of uh, 128, 128, 128, and I'll give this 0. 0, 0.3 it's going to be too faint I mean 0 0.3 so this is kind of similar to what we have here search and we are we are working on it gradually so since I already have this I'm going to go to the next part of adding this icon which is the voice search icon
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my HTML and I would I would add that. But I also want to add this uh, tooltip. I think I'm going to leave the tooltip for after I've added everything. So I'm going to come here and I'm just going to open another button. I'm going to call up another button class. So inside this button, I'm going to call up the image. And I have the voice search icon. So let me see. The voice search icon is already there, but it's, I guess it's probably also too small. So I'm going to give this voice search icon a class. And I'll give it a class of voice. Also, this button, I'm also going to give it a class so I can be able to target the button appropriately. And I'll give it a class of button voice. So, once this is done, I'm going to go back to my CSS. And I can style the voice. I would also give it the same height I've been giving the others, which is 25 pixel. And I'm also give give this a margin top of four pixel, just the way I did for the search. Let me see what I have. Now this is good. So, and um, okay. One thing is this: for the button where we have um, where we have this. Okay, let me just continue. I'm going to come back to my HTML, and I'm going to call up this button voice class this button voice class and I'm going to style this button voice class so for the button voice class coming back to CSS we have dot button then we have voice I have a border radius around it of 20 pixel right so if you see what I have here, I know it might not be so visible because I think once I hover around it, that's when it comes on. So, okay. So since I have that, I've given this, this border radius and I can give this a height of uh, 38 pixel. And I can give this a width of 40 pixel. Let me see what I have. Okay. So I want to remove the border. And I want the background to be transparent. Okay, so this is it. Now this is good. So we are working our way gradually and this is looking good. So back to what I currently have here, which is the right session. That's what is left. Now for the right session, I'm going to work on the right session I'm going to delete this and for the right session here I have this create I have this notification and I have this image I'm going to just put another div here and this is where I'm going to put every other thing that contains our create uh, button and the likes so since I have this I'm going to give it a class of button create
and inside this div is where I'm going to add my image. And I'm going to add this upload SVG. So I'm also going to give this image a class so I can target it and style it appropriately. And I'll give this class create. I go to my youtube.css and I can call up the class and I'll give it a height just like I've been doing from the beginning. I give this a height of 25 pixels. So I go back to my HTML. Remember, this is it on the left section here. And um, I have this notification and I also have this, um, my profile picture there. So back to my HTML here, I am going to Outside this div, I'm also going to create another div for the notification because it has to be in a separate container because that notification is kind of special because it has an absolute and it has two absolutes, not even one absolute. It has two position absolutes. So I'm going to call up this class, this div here, and I'm going to give it a class. I'll call it notification container. Now inside this class, this is where I'm going to put my notification bell. So I call up this image here. And I put my notification bell. I'm also going to give it a class so I can style it appropriately. And I'll give this a class of notification. Once this is done, I'm going to come here and I can see that I have these two just placed top and bottom. So I'm going to go to my CSS and I will target this particular class, which is the right section, and I can style it appropriately as well. So coming back to my right section in my CSS, I'm going to have to come down to this place where I have the left session, the middle session, I'm going to do call up the right session here. And in this right session, I'm going to give it a fixed width just the way I did for the left session where I gave it a fixed width of 180 pixel. So I'm going to give this right session its own fixed width of 150 pixel. And I'll give it a max. I don't need to give it a max width because it's not going to resize. I'm just going to leave it at this uh, this 180 pixel. I'm going to give it a display of flex. Okay, it's not visible yet. I think it's because. Okay, it's still not visible. I'm looking for my <laughs> for my code. Okay, I'm going to have to just minimize this the way I've been doing ever since. I'm not used to tilting to the left and it gives me issues. So I'm going to go back to this uh, right section and I'm going to look at it appropriately. I have a double S. I always know that whenever my code is not running, it has to be something that has to do with spelling. So this is section, not session. This is supposed to be section. And I come here and I change this to section. Okay, it should reflect now. Okay. Now the notification is not showing. That's because it is also large. So I'm going to change that notification. I'm going to also give it its own width 
rather its own height so i'm going to come down to this place and i'll call up the class of notification and i'll give it its own height of 25 pixel and i see it's already displayed as a flex so once this is done i'm going back to my right session and i'm going to style this right session just like i've done for all of the session so i have this display flex and i want to put a justify content space between and i want to also align my items to be centered and i have this i would also want to give it a margin on the right give it a margin on the right of 30 pixel and i'll give this a flex shrink the reason i'm going to give it a flex shrink is because whenever i shrink my screen i do not want it to i don't want it to to shrink so i'm going to give it a flex shrink of zero so let me see what i have now it's widely spaced i'm supposed to go back to my html and add my image so i'm going to also come back here create a new div let's come back to this place and i'm going to create a new div where i'm going to add my image so i'm just going to add my image here and i would call up my pictures i think i have it in my thumbnail so in my thumbnail i don't have it in my thumbnail so i probably have it in my icons as well so i would call from my icons and it's not in my icons at the same time okay i found it so it's um channel profile i'm just going to call the channel profile and i have it here so with this now i can i can style this but i'm also going to give this a class so i can style it appropriately let me give this a class of my picture Let's go back to my CSS. I want to style my picture. I'm going to give it a height. Let me give it a height of 34 pixel. And let me see what I have. Okay, so I'm going to give this a border radius. I'm going to give this a border radius of 17 pixels. So with this, I think it's similar to what I have. And we can keep working. So I'm going to provide this file. I'm going to provide all of the assets in the description so you can have access to be able to recreate your own um your own clone for your own youtube or whatever you want to do so back to this now i want to work on the notification because this notification has this uh three on it so i'm going to go back to my html that's where i'm going to be able to work on this notification now looking at the notification container it's not even spelled correctly so notification container i'm going to add another div here and is that div i'm going to now give a position of absolute so i will set my notification container to a position of relative right so i'm just going to give this little open another div here and i'm going to 
put the number inside this div and I'll give this a class. I'll call this class notification alert. So back to my CSS now, I'm going to call up that notification container. And I'll give this notification container a position of relative. Actually, nothing changes with position relative especially if i don't give it coordinates of maybe top of this um of that or whatever so since i have this in my notification container i'm going to come back here my notification alert these three i'm going to now give it a position of absolute and then i can style it appropriately so for notification alert For notification alert, I am going to give this a position and I will call it absolute and I'm going to give it a top of zero, a right of zero let me see what i have okay this is looking good so since it's already on it i'm going to give it a background color and a color so i'm just going to give it a background color of red and a white color for the text now once this is done um Instead of me just giving everything a font family, I'm going to call up my body and give it a specific font uh, family. And every other CSS element is going to inherit that CSS that, uh, font family. The only thing I'm going to do is to change the font size here. I'll change this font size to be 12 pixel. And then I'll add a padding. So let me see what I have before adding the padding. So you can see, this is it. So I'm going to add a padding on the left. I'm going to add a padding on the right. And I'm going to give it a border radius. I'm going to give this a padding left, five pixel. And a padding right of five pixel. Then I'll give this a border radius. I'll give it a border radius of 10 pixel. So let me see what I have before we work on the tool tip. It's looking perfect. So this is absolutely gorgeous. And I've been able to work on my notification alert. So back to um back to our tool tip. Because we're supposed to work on that, but I said let us wait until we are done. So I want to add a tool tip like this, like this, like this, and all of this. So I'm going to come here to my HTML and I'm going to add that that um that tool tip here. Now remember the tool tip is on the search, is on the is on the search, is on the voice, is on this button create and is on the notification as well. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to come to starting from the middle session right directly under this image i'm going to create another div so directly under the search icon i'm going to create another div where the tool tip will be and i will set that tool tip to a position absolute and set its coordinates while i set the parent uh container which is this button search I'll give it a position relative. So let me do that and we can finish up with the tooltip. So I'm going to give this search. Since the tooltip is the same for everything, I'm going to add a class 
and I'll call that class tooltip. So I'm going to copy this directly under this image here. I'm going to also paste this. I'm only going to change this from search to something, another text, which is going to be search with your voice. I'll also paste here under notification and okay i'll paste here under create as well because we also have one for create and i'll call this one create and then i would paste here under notification and i'll call this notifications so once this is done I'm going to go to um, for the notification I'm going to go to notification um, container here yeah, and I will set it to position absolute I would also do that for this class here um, not, uh, button create and I would also do the same for this class here of um, of um, button voice and I will also do the same here for the button search. So let me just get back to my CSS and let's let's finish up what we started for the tooltip. Now for the tooltip, I'm back in this button search. So we are going to do it for this button search. So when I over on the button search, now for my button search. Let me go back to my HTML to be sure. Um, okay. So it's going to be... On the button search still. But I'm going to recall my button search again. I won't do it on the same uh, button search I have here. That's because I want to... Okay, I can still do it here. I'm just going to give this a position relative. And let me see what I have. Because there's going to be some changes. Okay. Okay. So I have this button search position relative. And then I'm going to give it the display. To be flex i think i already gave it a display of flex okay let we'll give the display of flex let me see all right so for my button search i want it to justify and i want this to be center and i want to align my items in the center okay now for the tooltip I'm going to just target the button search and I'm going to use this CSS selector where I'm going to select the button search and I target the tooltip in the button search so button search then dot the class tool tip and now I want the position here to be absolute and the background color to be gray okay then I want the color to be white. I also want the padding to be 4 pixels on the vertical and 8 pixels on the horizontal. That is top 
and bottom then left and right 8 pixel then let me see what i have okay this is looking good then i want it to have a border radius so it won't be pointy a border radius and i will give this two pixel i also want it to have a font size of um, 12 pixel and i'm going to make it right it's still covering my search so i want it on the bottom let me try giving the bottom of zero I'm supposed to give a bottom of zero okay now it's coming down but i want it to be lower so i'm going to give it negative let me give it negative 10 pixel okay this is getting better so i'm going to change this to 20 pixel so at negative 20 pixel this is good another thing i would do is to add an opacity so it won't be visible because i want it to be visible only when i over on it so remember our opacity is from is ranging from zero to one so at, at an opacity of zero it's going to be totally invisible right and since i'm working on transitioning it so i'm going to come back come down here and i want to target whenever i over on it so remember to target the over i'm also going to do a button search over then i target i say two tip so once i have this i will now put the opacity to be one so let me see once i over on it i have it to be one so i'm going to add a transition and with that i think that's done for this for this session here yeah? so i'm going to add a transition and i'll keep this transition at 0 0.15 seconds so let me see how it is but what exactly am i transitioning it has to be the opacity so i need to call up the opacity So you can see the way it's gradually just easing in and showing me my tooltip. So with this now, I'm going to replicate this for the search. I'll replicate this for the create and for the notification. Now, instead of me to just have button search tooltip, then I come to uh, the one for create, where for the create is going to be, um, for the voice rather, is going to be button voice right so and it's all the same so i think i'm also just going to recreate this but i cannot recreate that i can't put it here in this button search tooltip because of this all other things that the search already has because the button search has this height and whatnot so i'm just going to call up my button voice again so my button my button voice um i'm going to call up my button voice because i need to set my button voice to a position of relative and i have not worked on my okay i worked on button voice earlier so i can just do the same add more to it and the likes but is it the same as my button search? I want to know if it's the same. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to have to delete this. Since I already called up that button voice, I'm going to come back here to this button voice. And I will add more to it. I want it to have a position of relative. I'm going to give it a display of flex. Although not necessary, I give it a display of flex. 
not necessary but the reason why i'm giving it a display of flex i literally might not even give it a display of flex i'm going to remove this flex but the reason it's because i want to be able to align it and give this justify content center because without initially giving that a display of flex this justify content and this align item might not be effective so hence the reason why i first of all give it a display of flex to keep it at the center right okay so once i'm done with this i'm going to also target the tooltip that is this button search tooltip and instead of me doing button search tooltip again uh button voice instead of me doing button voice tooltip again i can just come to my button search tooltip and i target since it's all the same so i'm going to do button voice and i target the tooltip because it's the same property i'm going to assign to it so why repeat my code and besides i okay this is button voice tooltip let me see what i have now i think i've messed up what i already did earlier i'm pretty sure i'm not targeting it appropriately so let me look i'm going to put a comma there has to be a comma so it's with the comma now that is it's targeting button search tooltip and button voice tooltip so let me see what i have now perfect except that i've not done the over for this so since i also have button over i'm going to put a comma here and i'm going to do button voice over and i'm going to do dot tooltip so with this now when i over on it it's going to be effective so let me see okay button voice the spelling here is wrong so this should work perfect now what i'm going to do is for this absolute and all of this um it's not really working for my for my button voice and i guess the reason it's not working for my button voice is because um i think i want to wrap this on a straight line so that the this uh this bottom can really go low so what i'm going to do is to put a a party called white space so i'm going to add white space and i would say no wrap so let me see what i have what i have here okay now this is good so i have no wrap it's, it's pretty simple we have our button create which i already set to a position of relative and then i took the tooltip and i create and i targeted the button create tooltip just by adding a comma after so it can work for both the search the voice and the button create and then for the over i added this so one more thing i think i want to add to this is called um pointer event and i'm going to set this to none so for this pointer event setting this to none will to ensure that when i over on the tooltip it won't show until i over on the icon right so basically i have this sorted out so the last but not the least here is for the notifications so i already back here for the notification i did that earlier but i was i deleted it again because i i saw that it changed my my arrangement but I'm just going to go back to do the same thing. I'm going to call it tooltip. And 
I'll give these notifications again. So once this is done, I'm just going to target this notification container and I'll give this notifications container a relative and then my two tip would be absolute. So going back to my CSS, I already targeted that my position uh, container earlier. So I need to look for it where I worked on it or I will target it again. Okay, I found it here. So since it's here, I'm going to give it a display of flex. I'm going to give it a display of flex and I will justify and align at the center. So once I'm done doing this, all I need to do is to go back to set my tooltip. So I'm just going to have to, it's literally the same as all of the tooltip I've been doing. So I'm going to come back to this place and I'm going to just put it here as well. So I won't have to have repeated codes, um, code. I'm just going to put a comma here and I'll target the dot notifications container to tip. And I'm going to have it here as well. I'll put a comma here. And then I would target the class dot notification container, then the two tip. Okay, so I'm going to refresh and something wrong with my internet again. I'm just going to copy this. to open a live server okay so since we are done and we have this it's it's there except the opacity so I'm just going to check for the opacity to see if there is notification So I'm pretty sure there is something with the spelling. That's it. Okay, I've not done for the over. I'm not sure there ought to be an over here. Now with this, it's going to be out. So until I over on it, and now our header is set. I'm just going to go back to our code. I'm going to remove this background color. And yes. So I'm going to give it a tone background color of white. And perfect. So I have my header done. I'm going to then work on the side menu. So let's work on the side menu. Before then, I want to put in some um some uh some properties to the body that will be inherited downwards. So I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to target my body. I want to give this a, a font family. I think I mentioned that earlier of Arial. So I would also give this a margin. I'll give this margin zero. And I'll give this a padding top. I'll hit the pixel, and I would also give this a padding left. Now, the reason why I'm giving it a padding top is because by the time I start to work on the content inside, 
like all of this uh, banner and the likes it's going to start from ATP gel that is the body instead of starting from the top that's why I gave this a padding top and I'm also going to give it a padding legs because by the time I, I do this uh, side navigation if I give it a padding left, ba left value to push it to the left so there will be space and it won't, it won't be under this this uh, navigation here yeah? so that's why I'm giving it a padding top and a padding left so for the padding left I'm going to give it a padding left of 100 pixel So once this is done, it's time for us to work on our um, side menu. So once I'm done with the other here, I'm going to just comment saying this is for side menu. And I'm going to comment this. This is to highlight and comment. So we can start to work on our side menu also do that for the CSS so we can also start to work on the side menu now don't forget we style we write the H, uh, the HTML then we style corresponding CSS now for the style uh, for the side here we are going to make use of um, of our semantic element and I'm going to use a nav so for for that inside the nav I'm just going to give this a class of side menu I've given it this I'm just going to also put all of these individual icons in its own div and the reason why I'm putting it in its own div is because it has its own individual styling as you can see when I over on it it has this shadow it has this background stuff here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now put it in a div so I'm going to call up the image and we have the home I'll just give this a class I'll call it side menu link. So since I have this side menu link and I'm going to put another paragraph which is which is going to have the home shot and everything. So I'm going to call up a paragraph here. And I would call this home let me see what I have right so it's big I'm also going to give this image its own class so I can target it appropriately so I'm going to go to my CSS I'm just going to instead of giving it a class I'm just thinking about it now how about I just target all of the image and give them the same size so what I'm going to do is come to my CSS and I will do side menu image so I'm going to do dot side menu image so this is the class the class here is side menu so i'm going to do side menu then i will do the image so for all of the image in this side menu class i'm going to give them a height of 24 pixel and i will give it a margin button because i want it to have some space between the image and the and the paragraph so i'm going to give it a margin bottom of four pixel let's see how this works okay now this is perfect so i'm going to go back to my html and i would work on on this so going back here 
I'm just going to copy all of this, this div, and I'll duplicate it and I'll change the icons. So I have this here. Instead of um we have shots. And I have this as short. So I'm back here. I'm going to replicate I'm going to uh, paste this again. And I'm going to change this to subscriptions. Also paste it again and I'll give name this will be library and I'll change this to library so we have all of this now this is good let's go to style it in our CSS now for the class that is carrying this side menu we need to give it a position of fixed as well right so back to the css i'm going to call up that class which is side menu now if you have not watched my video on css position property please go ahead to watch it because i this i i explained in depth css position property of fixed of static sticky absolute and relative so you can have a good understanding of all of this positioning in css now i'm going to give this a position like i said of fixed because when we scroll up and down the page it's fixed so giving this a position of fixed and i want it Okay, let me add the background color so that we can at least have an idea of what we are doing. So back to this. Now we see that there's a background color for now. What I'm going to do is add the top. Now from the top, because I don't want it to be under the header. The header already has a height of 80 pixels. And I want it to just come directly under the header. So I'm going to give this a top of 80 pixel and I'll give it a bottom of zero so it stretches to the bottom and it gives me 80 pixel space from the top so I have this here to be zero and I have the left because I want it to be directly on the left so I have the left here as well to be zero so I haven't done this I have my position fixed on the side menu so this is just what I want to show you I'm going to change the color back to white and I'm sure it's pretty visible now so changing this color back to white I have it exactly like this now I want to style the side menu itself that is this div that contains the individual uh, image and the paragraph so I'm going to style these individual divs all of these divs this home shots and all of this this uh, side menu link i'm going to style it so um we have it for for this we have it for um for the library for the subscription we have it for the shots and we have it for the home so i have four of it one two three four and it's i gave it the same class so i'm going to come here I'm going to target the side side menu link now for this side menu link I'm going to give it a height and give it a height of um, 80 pixels
and I'm going to give this a display of flex. It's not really necessary, but I'm going to give it a display of flex so I can be able to give it a a, uh, a justify center and align center. So I'm just going to give this a display. Okay, of flex. And do this. Okay, now it's important for me to actually give it a display of flex. I'm going to give this a a, uh, a flex direction, which is going to be clear. Okay, so I'm then going to give it the justify. So it's pretty important that I give that a flex direction, otherwise it's going to remain as a rule. So I give the center. So another thing is whenever I over on it, I want it to have a cursor and I want it to be pointer. So with this, okay, and uh, what I'm going to do is I want it such a way that when I over on it, then I want it to be in this format right so going back to my code i'm going to add side menu link over Two four five, two four five, two four five. And I want the border radius twenty pixel, and I want margin left of six pixel. Okay, so my uh, shots and my subscription are overlapping, so I need to fix that. There needs to be a closing, a closing div here. So if I refresh this, it's back to normal. So maybe when I was doing my copying and pasting, I omitted the closing tag for this subscription so once this is done and i refresh i see that it's back to normal so what i need to do now is to style is to style this and i go back to my css and i can style my um my paragraph for the side menu link since i've been able to work fix that so i'm going to just do the side menu link and I want the P tags to be styled. I'm going to give it a font size. Ten pixel. Okay, so this looks this looks better or well, not close to what I currently have okay so I have this kind of looks 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 good so I think that's all for the side menu what we need to work on is all we need to work on now is this banner and this then this so back to our project I think it's coming up coming up similar to what we have yes very very similar now i'm just going to work on the banner so let's go back to our html and let's work let's work on the banner we're going back to our html now we are just i'm just going to comment this 
and i'll say um let me this is for the channel art so this is for the channel art and i can just highlight this and comment on it now for the channel art i'm just going to use a div basically and let's see what we have um, for the channel art here we have this image right and when i over on it this comes up and this twitter here is perma permanently on it so i'm going to go to my and i'm going to call up this image which is the banner but before then i'm going to give this a class and i'll call it banner image so i can call up the image here So this particular image is the tan gold right so let me refresh and it's extremely large so since it's it's really large definitely i need to style this as well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give this a class and i'll call it banner so i'm going to go to my css and I will target this banner class. I'm just going to make a width of 100. So this is it since it's here then i can add this twitter and as well as this image when i over on it so i'll go back to my html and i'll work on that so back to this i'm going to then add a button because that twitter is a button so i'm going to add this button And inside the button is where I will have the image, which is, which is, um, I'm not going to use a, a, an image, rather, the only um, image that's going to be in my button is literally the, um, the icon. So what I'm going to do is, is, is this, I'm just... I'm just going to put Twitter here and I'll style, style this. So I'm going to give it a class and I'll give it a position of absolute. So I'm just going to give this a class of, of Twitter still. So I'm going to come to my CSS and I'll target this Twitter. what we have is down here right so for the parent container here which is the banner image i'm going to set a position of relative For this twitter i'm going to give it a position of absolute and i'm going to set the coordinates so that's the same application of of this entire um of of this position property in css so if you if you are yet to have a full grasp or a full understanding then i would i would strongly advise you watch that video so i'm going to give this a right because it's on the right I'll give you the right of 10 pixel a bottom of 10 pixel as well 
I'll give it a color. That's a text color of white. And I'll give it a background color of gray. So going to give it a padding horizontal padding and vertical padding so for the vertical which is the top and bottom i'm going to give it 10 pixel and i'll give the horizontal left and right 12 pixels and then i want a border of none font size of 12 And I font weight uh, of 600. So the font weight is a property that describes how bold or how faint it is. So we have this. Now I want to put the icon. So I come here to my awesome icon font and I search for Twitter. So I have this and I'm going to copy this in my code. So since I have this, I'm going to go to I'm going to come here in my HTML and then I paste this just in between my code before i'm going to paste it directly here so i have this and i can remove this so let me see what i have perfect so i'm just going to add a padding and i'm going to change the color to blue so back to my html here i'm going to up the class the class for the icon so we have it to be fa twitter and for this fa twitter i'm going to give it a color so the color code for twitter is this ash zero zero a C E B and I'm also going to give it a margin on the right so there can be space in between. So margin right of three pixel and this is perfect. So for the um for this over effect for the camera, I'm going to go back to my HTML and I'll work on that. So come back to my HTML. Now, for this HTML here, I'm also going to call up a div, right? Because I need to put that camera um, image there, that camera button there. So, I'm going to call up a button instead of a div. I'm going to use a button and I can be able to style the button. So, I'm going to... I don't need to put anything except the image. So, I'm going to call up a class except the camera icon rather so i'm going to call up a class and i'll give this class camera and let me go look for the camera icon on so i have this and i'm going to paste it So once I'm done pasting this, I'm going to style this camera. And remember on our project here, it's only when we over on it that it reflects. So that means it's going to definitely have an opacity of zero. And when I over on it, it's going to have an opacity 
of one just the way we've been we've been working on on it right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come back to my code here and i'm going to target uh the class of camera and i'm going to work on it because and i'm going to give it a a a position of absolute because i already set my banner image position here to be relative if you see this banner image position is relative so that's it and i'm going to do the same for this so come to coming to css i'm just going to position absolute we want a top of 10 pixel I want it right of 10 pixel as well I want a padding of 20 pixel I want the border radius 50% so it can be fully so come here on my clone it's it's working and I want the border to be known So when I over, I'm going to give it an opacity of one. So what I'm going to do is do uh, now I'm going to have to add a okay, let me see how this would work. I'm going to have to add this banner image here. So when I over and the banner image. Okay, so it's working and um, then I'm done with this session now the next session for me to work on is for the channel about so this channel about just like this channel about I'm going to work on the channel about then I go to my HTML and this For the channel about is also super super simple. I'm going to call it a div. So let me just explain what I have in this channel about. You see, I have this my image here, and I have this information, and then I have all of these buttons here. So it's in a display of flex. That is the parent container. It's in a display display of flex. Then I have this in a div. I have this in a div, and I have this other. Uh, session in a div so I divided it just like the way I did for the header where I have the left section the middle section and the right section so going back to the HTML we are going to have the div which is the container for the channel about and I'm going to give this a class called channel about so 
once I'm done, I'm going to pull up another div. And in between this div here, which is the left section, is where I'm going to have the image. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to call up this image here. Remember, I'm working in sessions, which is the left session comes first. And I'm going to call up my, my image. I'm still going to use this, this same channel uh, profile here. So I'm going to call up. Channel profile and I'll give this a class. I'll call this I'm okay image would be better. Now this particular div too, I would also my need to style it. So I'm going to give it a class of uh let me just change this one to I'm okay. Now I give this a class of I'm okay image. So I have I'm okay image here and for this other then the other div, which is for the middle session i'm going to put paragraphs and i'll have i'm okay at i'm okay myself welcome and i'm okay and likes so i'm just going to do that here and I have this give this in the class and Okay, I'm going to um, look at this. It's bold and every other thing is is not that bold. So I'm going to use a span. I'm going to use a span for this. So I'm going to put this in a span. I'll cut out this at um, okay itself. And I'll put it in the span. So since I already have this in the span, and I'll put the rest of the information, which is um, please subscribe to my channel. I only have just 365 um, subscribers, <laughs> which I am actually really proud and I'm grateful to every one of you who, who are subscribers. So, you you actually mean a lot to me. And 12 videos currently, but more to come. Now the next paragraph, I'm going to have the welcome as the about. I okay, I'm I'm okay. I blog. I blog and and make documentaries. about people places then I have this created on sign so the next part is this button channel customize and manage video so once we're done with that we we'll create another div where we house all of this now inside I create a button and I say customize channel and I create another button which is manual
So I give this a class of customized trimming. And I give this a class of manage video. So we can begin styling. Let's see what we have. Okay, so this is looking good. Now we'll go to our CSS and this parent container here, which is the channel about, I'm going to set a display. Remember, I'm going to give it its own display and I'll give it a display of um of flex just like I I made mention of or let me see let me look at it one more time okay so we have uh, a card here which is the channel about yes i'm going to give it a display of flex so it can be aligned so let's get started and let me see um so i have the image I have this class here. I didn't set classes for the remaining paragraphs. I need to set classes for the remaining paragraph. So for this other paragraph here, since I had I have a span, so I need to also still set a class. Because the class I set would I need to set a class. And I'll call this I'm okay herself. I would also set a class here and I'll call this Amokepi to comment that this is for channel about. So this is for channel about. So I'm going to take the parent card, which is the channel about. style this so for the channel about to give it a display of flex I'll give it a flex direction which is a row I give it justify center align item center as well then I give this a margin a margin on the right of 100 pixel and I would also give it a margin bottom of 100 pixel now I would then give it a padding on the left as well of 40 pixel. So if I check what we currently have now, okay. So this is um, this image and everything has to it has to change because it's far away. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put this two in a div. I mean, the image and all of those paragraphs, I'll put it in a div and I would call that div a mocker card. So what I'm going to do is, this um, channel about and the likes, is going to come here and open a div here. I'll call this give this a class and i'll just call that class a mocker card just like i said right so i'll put all of this inside i'll put this in this div 
So I want to style these two and let's let's see what we have. So I'm going to come back to my CSS and I will target the Amoke card and I'm going to give it a display of grid and I want to give it its own space. Um, the reason for doing that is so I can have it to appear side by side like this and these two will now print container of flex. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to target the dot Amoke card and I'll give this a display of grid I'll give this a grid template colon of 150 pixel and 1 fr and I want to justify as well to be space between and align center. Okay, so this is it. I'm going to go back and remove this padding because it's not supposed to be padding. I think I made a mistake for me. I want to put this as padding left not padding so padding left of 40 pixel and okay so i'm going to target this image this particular image class of i'm okay and give it its own width Okay, except that there's too much space on this side. But while I'm doing that, let me also give this a border radius. I'll give this a border radius of let me see 100 percent. Okay, so this particular banner we need to add a margin bottom. So for that banner, um, I'm going to add the margin bottom here. And I'll give it the margin bottom of, let me say 10. I'm not so sure if that will be enough. Okay. Compared to this, it's too small. So I'm going to increase this to 50. Okay, it's better. Now, let me fix fix this padding. I think I'm just going to remove this padding left and let me see what I have. Okay, it's still literally the same. And okay. Let me see what I have here. Okay. Um, all right, I'll get back to that. Let's customize the buttons and work on the other part of the project. So back to CSS. I'm going to call up the buttons that we currently have. So we're going to work on the... Let me see. Okay, we need to work on all of this and the span and the likes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set about I'm okay, which is this class. This about I'm okay, this paragraph. I'm going to give it a font size, a font width, and a padding. And I'll do the same for I'm okay herself, and I'll do the same for the I'm okay P. So let me go back to my CSS and work on that. I call up the Amoke, the About Amoke, that's the class. And we have a font size 
Maybe we just took Pixel. Maybe there's a font weight. 500. Maybe there's a padding bottom. 120 Pixel. So we do the same for the for the others. We have a color gray. We have a padding on the bottom. And I want 12 pixels. And I want a font size. Of 15 pixels. Okay. This, um padding here yeah, i think it's too large probably two pixel will be fine okay um let me see okay so we'll come back to css it's padding bottom and it's 120 how come so that's what's causing the issue and even this 12 is too much make it 6 okay and then we have padding bottom let's see 6 6 pixels Okay, I'm just going to remove all of the padding bottom. Okay, I think it's better this way. And then for the span, I'm going to color up the span. And I'm just going to give it a color. Where did it be? I'll give this a font width. 600 so for the amokepi let me see what we have okay now coming back to this place um uh, this space here okay so for the amokepi Also do the same i'll give you the color gray and a font size of 12 pixel um, let me make this 15 just like i did so this is looking better now let's work on the buttons and then i'm going to have to come back to work on this on this side so speaking of the button we have a customized channel and manage video and they are alike they're literally the same thing so i'm not going to have to repeat the same thing i'm just going to write it for Customize channel and 
manage video so we are going to have a background color for this background color i'm going to use the rgb as well Five and six. So vertical of ten pixel, horizontal of sixteen pixel, and use the body. Imagine left. I want to imagine left. I want some space to the left. I have 10 pixel. And I'm going to do a border radius of 16 pixel. And the front. Weight of 600 and the color black and I do a cross up pointer okay let's see okay this looks good for the justify content I add center that was why it was lumped up like that so i had to change it to space between so if you see that at center you would observe it literally brings it to the center so i figured out that i'm supposed to put this as a space between and i also added a padding left of 40 pixel from the left just a little bit so it can be similar to this Another thing is, um, I also added a, a margin on the right. I added a margin to, uh, right for the Amoke image. So for the image, I added a margin right of 20 pixels so I can have this space in between this and this. So I literally, that's what I did. I'm going to change this image back to the channel for picture because it seems that other image is too large it's not giving me the kind of rounded corners that i should have so now this is still almost the same but i think it's a little bit similar to what youtube has and we're working gradually so the next is to add this then work on this so basically we have to go back to our html and we can be able to fix that now we're done with that section so i'm also going to comment out and i'll say that this is for channel navigation for for me to be able to understand my code so this is for channel navigation and for the channel navigation i'm also going to start with a with a div right so i can be able to add all of those all of this um home videos shorts playlist and the likes and if you observe that whenever i over around it the color changes so i'm going to use that opportunity to work on this then i do this then we can finish up this project so back to to the html i'm going to call up a div that will house all of those paragraphs so i'm just going to call up a div and i will give this a class of channel nav uh let me i've used channel nav before so let me just call this amoke nav so with this i can begin to add 
up all of the paragraphs I want to add. So it's going to add up this paragraph. I'll call this home and I'll give this a class of home. So in order for us to be fast, I'm going to try to speed up this process. So paragraph I'll call these videos and I'll give this a class of video. I'll call these shots and I'll give this a class of um, shots. So I'll do a playlist. So give this a class and I'll call this playlist. And I'll do community and I'll give this a class of community. So it's, this is supposed to be playlists and this should be playlists. Then I have channels. And I also give this a class. Of channels. And last but not the least, we have a search icon. And I'll call up an image for that. And I'll call up from my icons. I already have the search there. So I would use what I already have. And I'll give this a class of search icon. So since this is done, I am going to leave this and let's check what we have. Okay, so look at where everything is just in this navigation. So I'm going to style it in my CSS and I can work on it. So going to CSS, I am going to call up this um this class where i called amoke nav so i'm going to give this a display of flex let me see what i have okay um it's not supposed, it's supposed to be directly under this so i'm going to have to go back to my html to know why i'm having it that way so we have uh okay and now i know the reason uh there needs to be a closing tag for this div here so that's what's causing this so let me refresh and this is better so since this is it, I for the channel about for this session here, yeah, this channel about, let me go to my CSS. This margin bottom of 100 pixel is too much. I'm going to change it to let me say 50. Okay, I think 50 might be better. Oh, it's even still too much let me try um 20 pixel it's okay so this is looking better now i go back to my css 
I'm back to my CSS now and I'm going to keep styling this. So since I've given it a display of flex, I can give it a justify content and I want it to be space between. I want to align my items to the center and I want my margin on the left. A hundred pixel and I want 120 um, sorry and I want a padding on the right to the 120 pixel I'm going to give this a color gray let me give this a color of gray on the bottom as well 10 pixel and I want the also to be pointer now when I hover on the individual home videos and the likes the color is going to be black but for now it's going to be gray so let's see what we have it's gray so when I over on this, it's going to be black, each individual. So I'm just going to do home dot over video dot over. Okay, this should be colon over rather. So colon over. And video colon over and I'm also going to do for shots colon over which should be since it's the class and comma I keep doing playlist I target playlist so when I over on the playlist Then I have the community and the channel, then the about. Then channel. And finally about. when I when I um, when I over I want it to have an I want it to have a color a color of um, of black so when I over I want it to have this color of black let me see okay now it's, it's working okay playlist channels are not working let me check playlists channels let me see perfect so it's similar to what i have here um okay so since this is done it's just what's left is for me to add that line and for me to add that line in html I call up horizontal rule so I'm just going to put that in a div and go back to my my HTML just directly after this uh, this div I'm going to remove this okay so back to my HTML Directly under this div, I'm going to call up another div and I'll put my horizontal rule HR. It's simply a self closing tag. So let's see what we have. Okay, this is not bad. So we need to style that, but before even styling that, let me work on 
the other part of this so i can finish up with our html which is this button of popular and latest so just directly under this as well after this div i'm going to open a new div and i give it a class and i put those buttons in it so i have this div and inside this div i have the button and we have latest another button and then we have popular I'm going to give them a class of latest and popular I'm going to give this a class and I'm also going to give this another class So I'm just also gonna give this a class in case I might need to target it. Let me call it latest popular. Okay, so let me see what I have here. I have those buttons. Now it's time for me to style those buttons before we finally go to the end ending part of this project which is the video grid so back to to this i'm back on my css i'm going to first of all target the hr because the length is kind of different from this or okay i'm just going to leave it or oh, let me see okay it's the same maybe i might give it a it's literally almost the same I don't see any difference so I'm just going to give it a faint color maybe and maybe give it a margin right okay then so back to our CSS let me target this HR I'm going to give it a margin right Let me give it 20 pixel. I would also give it a margin bottom so there will be some space for the button of 20 pixel. Let me see if I can make the color a little bit a little bit um, light. So I'm going to use RGB. I'll use this 250 250 and then I had an opacity here of um, 0.3 let me try 0.3 and let me see what I have um, okay so let me see what I have it's, it's a little better um i can now target all of my buttons so this button i this latest and popular button i'm going to come down to latest popular and give this imagine imagine on the left of um, 40 pixel and imagine on the bottom so there can be some space for the video grid so imagine on the bottom of 20 pixel okay so this is this is fair now i want to start the individual button so latest for latest it is black while for the popular it is white so i'm going to give it the padding padding first so vertical padding 
or 10 pixel horizontal padding 14 pixel I'm also going to give it the background color of black and I'll give this a border in the border radius Let's see six pixels and I want you to have some space on the right to the to the popular button so I'm going to give this a margin right of 10 pixel as well and when I over on it I want it to be pointer so let me see okay I need to give it a color of white so that it can be visible okay so this is good and now let me style the popular so I'm just going to copy this um I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste this and I'll change this to popular and I would make this black while I make the background white okay okay and I'm going to give this a border so it can be visible or better still let me give it another color instead of adding okay so this is similar to what we have here on youtube now what's left for us is to style the video grid so let's go back to our html and let us style the video grid so going back to the html grid i have my cards arranged like this i have this thumbnail then i have the video title and the video starts I have it arranged in a grid don't forget a grid is a multi-dimensional layout that allows you to arrange uh, your your cards or your divs in colons and in rows so what I did is I'm going to put all of this inside a parent div and then I'm going to give that my parent div a display of grid and I'm going to set a grid template colon to determine the size and also give it spaces in between this uh, div now for this individual card as you can see i have this uh, duration here that shows the length of the video which is on this thumbnail so what this means is that this my thumbnail div is going to be given a position of relative and this my um my duration here is going to be given a position of absolute and i'll give it some coordinates so i can place it on the bottom right corner of this image and that's how we're going to do it so let me go into my HTML and let's just show you and continue working on this project so back to my HTML here I'm going to create I'm using uh, HTML semantic element and I'll call it main This main, I'm going to give it a class called Video Grid. Once I'm done with this, then I'm going to give open another div that would contain the thumbnail image. Don't forget, I made mention of that earlier. It's inside this div I'm going to put my image. So I have the source here, which is the thumbnail, and I would use this CSS web page, uh, web p. 
So this is my div that contains this image. I'm going to give it a class so I can be able to give it the position of relative. And I will call it thumbnail. Also for my image, in order for me to style my image properly, I will give it a class and I will call it picture one. Now, in between this div that contains the thumbnail, I will open another div, which is where I will put my duration. And it's 1 hour, 21 second, 25 minutes. So I'm going to give this a class. I will call this class duration. So I can begin to style this in my CSS. Now back to my CSS. I want to first of all style my picture so it can take the entire space on the screen. So I come here and I call up picture one. I'll give this picture one a width of 100%. And then I'll give it a border radius as well. Once this is done, I want to be able to give the thumbnail that I'm going to put the duration in. I'm going to give that div a class of, I'm going to give it a position of relative. So I'm going to call up that class, which is the thumbnail class. And I'm going to give this a position relative. I'm also going to give it a margin bottom. So it can there can be some space between the image and the text. So I'm going to give this a margin bottom of 12 pixel. Once this is done, I'm going to go back to my HTML and I'm going to give this duration class a position of absolute and I will set the coordinates. First of all, I'm going to give this position absolute. Then I can set position. I want it to be at the bottom. And I want it 6 pixel. And I want it to be on the right of 10 pixel. Then I want it to have a font size. I'm going to also give it a font weight of 500. I don't want it to be too bold. And I'm going to give it a padding around. And I will also give it a border radius. Okay, so this looks good. I have this directly where I need it to be. So I can, I'm going to duplicate all of this into four so I can give it a display of grid and I can have it to be smaller because I'm going to give it a confined width. That is each colon 
or each card is going to have its own confined weight. Back to my HTML, I want to put the video stats and the video title. So I'm going to create another div as well. And I'll just put everything inside the div. So for this div, I'm just going to put my video title and my video start. I don't necessarily need to give it a class because I'm going to style my video uh, title and my video start differently. So I'm going to call up a paragraph, a P tag, and inside the P tag, I'm going to put the title of the video, which is Introduction to CSS. If you have not watched that video, please do well to watch that video. It's just an introduction, and it's really going to give you a full understanding of how to approach CSS. So I have Introduction to CSS here. I have Tutorial for Beginner Programmer. for once this is done i'm going to also give this a class and i will call it video title i'm also going to create another paragraph here which would house my video stats and what i have here is 23 views currently at the moment please do well to check the video now so i have here 23 views for the dots in between i'm going to use something called html entity so html entity for dots you can always google it so i got this from the internet and i have it to be and ash 183 and i have the semicolon so for that i'm going to also put the the uh three days ago and this is done so for this i'm going to give it a class and i'll call this class video start so i want to be able to style this too appropriately and then i can replicate this particular uh grid and have multiple grids so i can be able to do my uh my display of grid but one more thing i'm noticing is that i need to put all of this inside a div so i can be able to have that div uh be the be the container for for everything not this video grid i don't know if i'm making sense so i'm going to come back here and i'll create a div inside this div i'm going to put all of this and i'll call this div i'll give it a class of video preview so this video preview this is it it houses everything. Now I can copy everything I have in this video preview. And I'll paste here. I would call this, this is for the second grid. I'll do the same here i'll paste it here and i'll say this is for the third grid is now once i have one two so i have this here one then i have this two now i want to also create for the fourth for the third one 
say this is for the third grade. So I can open up this. Okay, I have the third grade here. This is for the third and this should be for the fourth. Now everything it's going to be inside this video grid, right? So I have the very first uh, video preview. Okay, I'm going to delete this. This is a repetition for the video preview. Okay, I have I have one here, which is for the first for the first video grid. Then this is for the second video grid. Then this is for the second then this is for the third then this is for the fourth so i'm going to expand everything and i can see that they have all of their opening and closing div correctly so i have all of this but i'm going to go back to my css and style my um my video title and my video starts so i call up the class which is the video title And for the video title, I just want to make it, uh, I want to increase the font size and I probably want to make it bold. So I'm going to give it a font width of 600. I'm also going to give it a margin button so there can be some space in between and I'll give it a margin bottom of 6 pixel I'll do the same for the video start I'll give this a color of gray so let's see what we have okay I have this is looking good I have introduction and I have this so this is similar to what I have here introduction then this I have that arranged properly so since I already have four four grids one two three four so the parent container for this in my html which is the video grid which contains all of the video preview i'm going to give it a display of grid and i can set the grid template column how i want it to be so i have this don't forget the the uh the class here which is the video preview contains this thumbnail and these paragraphs here and i have it in each card because the display grid i'm going to set is going to be effective for this video preview class which houses all of this information on that so that is how display grid works i also have a full explanation on how to use display grid display flexbox please do well to check that video if you're having a challenge understanding uh, display grid and display flexbox now coming back to my css i want to style a particular class which is the video grid so for the video grid i'm going to give this a display don't forget a grid is a multi-dimensional layout is used to display cards or items in columns and in row so the default for display grid is um i think the default should be a colon 
So, but since it's a colon, I need to also determine the size of each colon. So I'm going to give this a grid template colon. So calling up a grid template colon, I want it to have one fr, one fr, one fr. That is, let it take equal space. Each colon should take equal spaces. That is, one fr, one fr, one fr. Now, if I should come here to refresh what I have, you can see one, two, three, four. They've taken equal spaces. All I need to do here is to give some margin, which for display grid, it is called colon gap. So I'm going to give this a colon gap. Instead of giving it a margin. So giving it a colon gap, that is on each colon, it's going to have a gap. Let me give it a gap of 20 pixels. And let's see what we have. Now, this is looking really similar to what I have here. So I've given it 20 pixels on each side. Now, I'm now going to like duplicate all of this so I can have um, 11 cards and then I change the, the images and the text after. So I'm going to go back to my HTML and I would copy all the way from this video preview. I'll copy all the way from this video preview, first card, second card, third card, fourth, down to the fourth card, right? So I'll copy this. And I'll paste this here. And everything is still going to be inside my video grid. So if I collapse this, everything is inside. I'm just going to go ahead to edit this. So this uh, fourth card, I'm going to come here and I'll say this is for the sixth card. So this is for the sixth card. If I collapse this fourth card, it works. Okay, um, it's collapsing all the way to the end. So definitely, I need to put a closing. And I collapse this. This is for the foot. When you're copying and pasting, you have to be extra careful. Okay, so I have this for the cyst. Then I have this seventh, ca seventh card or the seventh grade. And I have this, which is the eight. Then this is for the nine. And I'll copy and paste two more for the tent. So I want to be sure that my copying and pasting is accurate. Okay, the fourth and fifth are in uh, are here. This is one second. This is for the third. And this is this is for the fourth. Okay. So okay, this ought to be fifth. Okay, that's perfect. This fifth. Then this sixth. And this fifth is closing here. Then I have this should be the sixth. Should be the seventh. And this is for the eighth. So when you're copying and pasting, you just have to be extra careful because I do make that mistake a lot and I'm just going to take out my time. To look at it carefully 
okay so it's it's correct now let me go back to what i have to see all of my okay this is one two three four five six seven eight so i'm going to add uh three more and then we are almost done with this project i already have my project almost done so i'm going to go back to our html and i'll keep styling this since i've added a grid a colon gap so it's time for me to add a row gap i'm going to add another row gap of 25 pixel row gap here of 25 pixel so let's see if you observe i have 25 pixel on the row so the gap from this row and this row 25 pixel if i increase this to 30 pixel then you can observe the difference you can see that it gets bigger so i'm going to leave it at 25 pixel so it can be similar to what we have here and then i'm going to add padding on the left and padding on the right so padding right so that we can have some space on the right this way on the right here so i'm just going to you see we don't currently have any space on the right so i'm going to add a padding right here of 100 pixel so you now see we have some space on the right now we also need to have some space a little bit of space on the left so it can be similar and it will start from the same line as this latest so i'm going to add a padding left as well the um images so if i refresh this you can see i've changed all the images i've changed all the titles and our project is already done except one more part of the project i would also want to talk about which is the media query now for the media query it's important that we work on that because look at looking at uh, youtube's uh, project itself if it resizes you would observe that the moment i minimize this um this page and it gets smaller we have three instead of four so the moment it gets bigger it, it becomes four and even when it gets much more smaller it gets to two and then if it gets really smaller it gets to just one so we want to be able to learn how to resize this so we can have um small we can have like few grid cards on our on our screen when the when the screen size gets smaller so we're going to go to media query and we're going to target that in our css and we're going to be able to add the media query because if i minimize the one we're currently working on it just really gets smaller and it gets shrunk so because we don't have any media query here and even for my observation here the youtube ng logo and the search they need to be some margin on the right of that so i'm going to add the margin there and i'm also going to do for the media query so that it can be responsive whenever we resize the screen so back to our css i'm going to target media query here and to do that it's pretty simple all you need to do is open um go to the um at the media then open this bracket once you open the bracket then you can now put in the screen size you want so for my first media query i'm going to say that whenever we have a maximum width of 750 so i'm going to say max width So I have this colon, then 750 pixel. So whatever I put in this media query should activate, right? And what I want to activate here is the video grid. So I target the video grid. And I say, I want it to have a grid template colon of only one FR. So what this means is at a maximum width of 750 that is anything below this 750 
should activate this grid template colon so that is from zero to a maximum width of 750 i want it to have just this one fr that is just one card on the screen so if i come here now and i i minimize this at zero to 750 if you observe here i have just one grid one card on the screen so that's what that means in our media query i'm going to do the same i'm going to call up another media query here and this time around i'm going to say that from minimum width of 751 to a maximum width of 1000 something i want it to have two cards on the screen so i call up my media query here bracket so this time around i want minimum width so at a minimum width of 751 pixel and a maximum width so i put this in another bracket too so at maximum width of 1000 nine nine pixel i want the video i want you to have a grid template colon of two fr each that is one fr one fr now what this means is whenever it's at a minimum of this that is between 750 to a maximum of 1,009 uh, 1,099 I want it to only have two cards on the screen so this once I do this now so if you observe I have two cards so what this means is this screen size is between this 751 pixel and 1,099 pixel so if it's bigger than this 1099 pixel i also want it to have its own um i also want it to have more more cards on the screen so i'm going to call up another media query as well to call up a media query don't forget add media then open bracket in between your brackets you put the screen size you want to target so this time around i want at a minimum minimum width of let me say 1100 pixel so there has to be a colon here don't forget i want to target my video grid so with media um with media query you can target a lot of properties you can decide to target several things so i'm going to also put it grid template colon here and i want it to be one fr one fr just the way we have it in the video grid so i want one fr one fr so there's no space and sorry there's no comma in between this one fr i made that mistake a couple of times and my code wasn't running and it gave me a whole lot of issues so with this now if i have this once it gets bigger everything works so once it gets smaller one two then i have that so all of this is activating in my media query so i have it that at a max width of 750 that is between zero pixel to 750 pixel uh screen size i want it to have only one fr between 751 pixel and a maximum of 1099 pixel i want it to only have two cards so at a maximum width of 1100 pixel that is the moment the screen size exceeds uh, this 
so it's supposed to be max the moment the screen size exceeds this i want it to have that four cards on the screen so i can okay this should be mean rather not max i want it that is between zero to maximum width of this 1100 pixel i want it to have this four cards so you can be wondering that okay why should they have between zero to 1100 pixel to have this four when i also have zero to 750 to have this one now it's going to activate this particular one in place of this because it will give this more priority as this is much more specific so this is where we have the uh, css specificity so this one is going to activate then this before this before it gets to this 1000 before it considers this 1100 pixel screen size so with this now i'm literally i'm done with this um with this with this project let me see if it still needs to be some resizing things to be done here okay for for this for this left section i need to put in something here i need to put a margin right so i'm going to put a space from on the right side so that when i shrink the the screen size there's going to be a little bit of space between the search and the and the ng so i'm going to go to the margin uh, to the margin left sorry to the left section and i'm going to give it a margin right of let me say 30 pixel now you can observe that there's a little bit of space between so i've been able to replicate what i did which is this original project i have it here and i also have it here for you please do well to replicate yours using html css and you can always uh, message me contact me we're learning together and i'm sure that in the next couple of weeks we are definitely going to graduate from this html css and move to core programming languages if you like this kind of content if you want to get into tech please do well to subscribe and turn on the notification bell on my channel because i share my practice videos i talk about tech i do things that helps us to get uh, into tech and i tell you how to get into tech and also i drop some fun content about places and lifestyle all right then thank you for this video i'll see you next time